Rolling or on, I got Queen V, the realest in the building. What up, dog? How you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Blessed to be here. I made it. I love your hat. I love, yes, your, I love the way you put so everything much. together. The hair, everything thank is beautiful. You so much rolling and bowling. Thank is, you. Is this your company or is it just a no, shirt? No, this is somewhere where I go to eat. You know, oh, shout okay. out to Zane's. You okay, know, cool. Lebanese food. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a lot of projects coming aboard, but uh, you are involved in the film industry. Yes. Uh, talk about the beginning of the film industry for you and what projects you have going on right now. Um, the beginning, I started working with Mac 10 Production, doing some um, different films, like What's Happening Next, mm-hmm. working with um, The Gorilla King, you mm-hmm. know, the Drugs and Strippers. And then I wrote my own movie, Street Queen. Yes. And Mac 10 Production, you know, he recorded it and... You know, shout out to everybody in it. You know, talk like, about your movie. Um, when you put it together, how did you decide who was going to be in it? Uh, how what is it like to create a film from scratch? Um, it was an awesome adventure. Like I just saw what was in my mind and thought about some stories I had been through. Thought about a couple I could throw in to make it juicier. You know, wrote it down and just put it together. It just came together perfectly because all my real family and friends and people who were supposed to be in the movie. Is in the movie, you know? That's fucking cool. Yeah. Talk about the movie. Talk about the story behind it. Yeah. Um, it's basically about shoot, shit going wrong. Baby daddy came up missing. Bank took bank card, all my money out the bank. And mm. you know, just a bunch of shit occurred. Ended up meeting the plug. Shout out to Chase P. And <laughs> um gave me a couple bricks. I fucked one up. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? A little midget <laughs> ran off with me, you know, Chucky Fly yeah. Baby ran off with the brick. Mm. Had to get his ass popped, but I still ain't get the money, you know. So yeah. they ended up kidnapping my children, my daughters, and it just it just got crazy. It was hectic. Yeah. But part two is coming soon. I'm about to start shooting part two next month. Oh, cool. I the, want you in it, kid. Oh, I'm in it. 100% okay, I'm in it. I've already done a, a movie, and I was amazing in it, and the theater went crazy for me, so I'll do another one. Okay. Talk good. about the process of getting that film to an audience and how you got that going. How did you get people to pull up? How did you get people to watch the movie? Um, God is awesome. All I did, Mac-10 shot it. He got me the movie. I put it on YouTube, mm-hmm. and it just is like at over 400K right now. Oh, excellent. So, yeah, it's going up there. It's almost at 500K, but now I'm about to get the files from Act 10 mm-hmm. and get it edited, you know, again, shorten it up a little bit because the movie is two hours. Okay. So shorten it up a little bit, and then I'm going to have it on Tubi and Roku. I mean, all that, all platforms, cool. just like my music. For sure. And yeah, mm-hmm. with your music as well, you have a lot of features with a lot of people that I admire and uh, love to work with as well. Yes. Get a quick mic fix real quick. Okay. Thank you. Um, One person in particular that's kind of on the rise right now is uh, We All Chair Go. Um, okay. But you featured with a lot, you've done a lot of features with a lot of artists. Talk about your collaborations yes. and which ones have stood out to you so far. Oh, I have a lot of beautiful collaborations. I have work with Rocky Bad, mm. um, Control with All Star JR. You know, I have um, a song with Wheelchair Goat and SG Tedder called Fuck Niggas. Mm. Uh, that one right there, people love that Fuck Niggas. They be playing it in the clubs, you know what I'm saying? The mm. strip clubs and stuff. But um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff. I just did a um, feature with. Uh, I got Big Herc and Cheddar Boy Malik yep. on one song. You know, so it's up there. It's up there. I'm about to get a feature with Bianca Bad. She was yes. supposed to be on that song, but I'm putting her on something else. Oh, cool. So I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, Stretch Money, got a song with him, you know. Yeah. But the one I love right now is that one with uh, Cheddar Boy Malik and Big Kirk. Back to back. We about to shoot this video. Me and BMF Gangsta about to do the videos back to back because he got one with Lil Hurt. Okay, you cool. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna do them back to back like this. How long has your music career uh, been so far? How long have you been making music? Long as COVID. Not, okay, so not too long. Yep, it's been like right after COVID started. What made you decide to hop into the game now? Uh, bars or battles. <laughs> <laughs> Big homie bars, like, your voice, your voice. I just moved back to Michigan, and he like, your voice, you gotta do something with it. Radio, TV, do mm. something. And then my children was like, Mom, you can rap. Go ahead and rap. I'm like, okay, that's what's up. So mm. I jumped off the porch. The steps, they called me out to do a song. They had to open up for them. Mm. That was the first thing I ever did. As soon as I came back to Myrtle Beach, Merck called me like, sis, I need you to open up. I got a song with Bianca Bad called Mind Games. I need you to open up. And I wrote Patty. 
Mm -hmm. That is my very first song. The video, I got on my motorcycle for the first time with a dress on, with a lady on the back, with a leash on her. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was lit. The police was watching me, so we couldn't pull out too much stuff. They was on our ass. From the time I came out the house. <laughs> they, they, when, as soon as I came out, all the motorcycles was out there, all the police was out there. I came out with a little dress on, had a lady on the leash. They was like, we was just checking, see what's going on. Yeah. You know them nice neighborhoods, them older neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where were you uh, born and raised? Detroit, Michigan. Cool. Um, talk yeah. about your experiences growing up in Detroit. Um, Just like a lot of black children growing up in the hood. Mama was rolling stone, always moving from this hood to this hood to that hood. That's why I'm good in any hood, anywhere I go. Mm. I stayed east, I stayed west, I stayed north end, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere. I went to Sherrod, you know, I just, everywhere. Murphy, I done been everywhere. Cody, I stayed on Joy Road, all over. Yeah. So, everywhere. It was good growing up, pretty good. A lot of fights, mm. running from the gangs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to jump us in. I ain't with the gangs. I don't do gangs. I even ride my motorcycle solo. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I ride with y'all. You know, you got to click. Y'all cool. I ride with you. We can go out of town, whatever. But I don't join groups. Well, what so. made you make the... A lot of people fall into the... Not not the trap, but obviously into that kind of routine or kind of into that lifestyle of being a party or associated with a gang or something like that. How did you know consciously to stay away from it? Um, Because I knew my mom was going to whip my ass. Mm -hmm. It's like plain and simple. I was going to get my ass beat. If I came home beat up, I'm getting my ass beat. If I come home in the gang, I'm getting my ass beat. You know what I'm saying? It's just common sense. I don't want to join the gang. I don't like groups. Mm -hmm. I've always been a loner. Besides my first cousins, you know, it was just me. My mm -hmm. little sister, you know. Let's see. You getting on my nerves with that little piece of hair on your eyelash. I want to Fix get it. it. Oh, I can get it. Oh, it might actually be stuck on there. Hold on, no, let me see. It's gone. It's okay, gone. I'm Thank you. It back to you. Pre yeah. No, it's not. Because you I think it's something? actually like uh -huh. stuck there. Like no, it's, it's on your eyelash. My oh, bad. It's all You're good. taking away from my interview. I just drove too long to go through this. You know? <laughs> Get yourself together. Okay, I'm back. My uh, sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, music and the, the, you know the spotlights on Detroit and the female artist uh, you know topic is still very hot right now. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you fit in with the female artists, and what do you how do you feel about the female artists in Detroit right now? Um, I feel like Detroit and the female artists, we got a lot of hot stuff, you know. But I feel like what makes me different, I'm talking about different stuff. I'm trying to empower women, where them queens at, show them how to get the money without selling ass, selling drugs. You know, it's a lot of stuff. You know, they've been there, done that, all that other shit. But it's time to do different stuff. Invest, businesses, record your own music, get your own brands. You know, it's just time to boss up. And I want people to know that. I want to empower the people. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that just make me different. I'm not going to twerk nothing. I got chicks to twerk for me, so you ain't going to catch me doing all that. Mm -hmm. And I just want the real music to get out there. Music you can understand as well, you know? Mm. You ain't got to be how Parks and Molly's and Lean all day, and, you know? Nobody understand what you're talking about. <laughs> but, uh -huh. but it's a lot of women that's cold. I met some cold, and I got a cypher called the Daily Assassins. All females. Nine of us, nine deadly assassins. Even my 16-year-old daughter is on there. She killed the end of that. Mm -hmm. That is cold. Everybody go check that out. The video is out on YouTube. You know, so that's cool. Yeah, a lot of cold videos out on YouTube. I got probably about twelve videos out, and mm -hmm. this summer I'm about to go so crazy. The video with Cheddar Boy and Malik, you know what I'm saying? The song oh, with Stretch Money. Shout out to Crane Royal. We about to drop that song. Um, it's so much. It's so much. You're a, you're still relatively video wheelchair goat and oh, Cheddar. Okay, for sure. mm -hmm, you're ahead. still relatively new as an artist. Uh, it's only been a couple of years that you you know you're announcing yourself as an artist. What have been some roadblocks so far? Um, just running into the bullshitters, you know, the people that try to take your money and run game and lose your files and just different stuff, you know, say they're going to record you and don't. And it's just, just small stuff. Just how your paperwork together, you know, mm -hmm. get you a manager like I just did. I've been doing it by myself this whole time, but now I just got a manager and I'm finding to be productive. He told me to hit you up, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll be hollering that kid. He done played my music on your live a couple times. Two songs back to back. <laughs> and you like my shit. <laughs> I'm like, that's what's up. Yeah, like, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that is so. absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, people, you, you have to rely on other people when it comes to the entertainment industry. You have to rely on directors and producers and shit. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get it, you know, your product back, it's like, what the fuck am I doing? You want to just time, work. Waste yeah. the money. Yeah. You know, waste the sauce. You could have been doing something else. Learn how to record yourself. Like, I just set up my own studio. 
Mm. Got my own studio set up. I'm about to start recording. I'm about to buy my own cameras so I can shoot my own movies. Because I be so many different states, so many different places. I see everything all day. Mm. Just got me some GoPros and shit. I ride my motorcycle, set that mug up. I'm about to put a lot of stuff together. There's so much stuff coming. I'm writing a book. There's so much stuff coming What's out. your book about? Oh, my God. It's about four couples where two of the women is cheating and two of the men is cheating. Mm. You know, and it's going to get interesting. A couple people going to turn out to be gay. One going to be gay. One going to be bisexual. It's just going to be interesting about stuff that's happened in real life all day. Damn, that happened in real all life? All day. Yep. Stuff that happened in real life. So Yeah, so based on a true story mm-hmm. when you open that front page. Yep. Um, relationships is a topic for you uh, that you're kind of exploring through your writing and your music and everything like that. What was so interesting to you about that particular area of life? Dealing with the man, the man and woman relationship, yeah. Um, I'm single. I ain't in nobody relationship. No, what I'm saying to you is what makes you so focused on that with your music and your writing and even in the movies and stuff? Oh, you talking about building a relationship with the people? No, woman, I'm talking about why is... Why does your music communicate that way? Why are your lyrics... Why would this book even be about that? Like, what's your focus on that for? Oh, it's because I just want to let people know what's going on, you know? <laughs> it's Everything is about knowledge. I want to share knowledge. I have a lot of it. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've experienced a lot of stuff. I've been through so much. I just want to enlighten people, you know? Just like my movie, The Kidnapper. He a pedophile. He want the girl. You know what I'm saying? People have to be aware of that stuff and it be family members and people that's close to you i just want awareness out that's the bottom line people talking about bull crap why can't i tell true stories right like the stuff that i've been hearing lately you know driving my transportation company um the stories are extraordinary i need people to know this stuff Mm. incest fathers you know what i'm saying they daughters all kind of stuff going on it's it's a lot of stuff that people need to be aware about for sure. Come on. Now you have kids and you're divorced. Uh, how does that balance into your career? How does how do you manage both at the same time? It's easy because my children are growing up. Oh, They're good. getting older, so it's getting easier. They support me. They come out to the video. You know, they rap if they want to. It's all coming together and being single and divorced. That's better. I don't have to worry about nobody um, clock watching me. You know. So yes. Okay. Everything obviously, coming, clock yeah. watching you and shit like that. Was that part of the reason for you getting a divorce? Um, no, oh, okay. no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. He was doing his thing, driving, working, Greyhound. I was doing my thing, going to school, nursing and stuff. It wasn't that. Just personal differences. What good advice could you, how long were you married for? Uh, seven years. Okay, what advice can you give to anybody that goes through a marriage and a divorce? Or you're just going through a marriage and how to make it work? Mm, try your best to make it work. Marry for love, not for money. Because mm. that, it really don't work. And, um, communication is the key. And try to make it work. And if it just can't work, you know, you getting beat down, stabbed, and all kind of stuff, getting stumped to death, it, you got to leave. And you got to be strong, and you can do it solo. Right. You don't always need a significant other. But some people don't know how to live without a significant other. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, a lot of men have been talking about that lately, how uh, it's like it takes all this money and shit to get a girl to be in love with you. But you just said that money, mm-hmm. you shouldn't marry for money. Talk about no. that a little bit. You shouldn't marry for money because it's the wrong thing. Like, I had a couple situations where elderly men want to try to marry me. Like, you'll be set for life. I got disability. I have, You know what I'm saying? I've been in the um, veterans and all this. Two and three check. Your children can go to college for free. It's not going to work out because I don't love you. And if I'm sitting up waiting on you to die and inherit something, I might go before you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so I won't ever get to see it anyway. So I just feel like you might as well marry for love and be happy. Because money can't buy happiness. How many people can't agree with that? Mm. You try to buy some shit, you know, like you trying to buy somebody right now. You probably bought that Benz for it and crashed it because it was. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> look, money don't buy happiness. You have to genuinely love somebody for it to work. Mm. Other than that, let it go. For sure. Have sex with them and just keep on going. Music uh, for you right now, is it the main focus or the movies? Or is the movie the main focus or are you just balancing everything at once right now? Um... The music was my main focus. That's why I have so many songs already recorded. So many songs are already out that people are already sleeping on. Mm. So there's so much stuff they need to be aware of, like videos like Hot Mama, you know, songs like Control with All Star JR work. Mm. So I'm about to I'm working on videos this summer and the movie. So it's all gonna come together. It's yeah. all coming together. For sure. Mm-hmm. What do you see maybe in a year from now or two years from now? What do you see everything lining up for you? 
Um, a lot of money in the bank. <laughs> All legit. Yeah. Legal. You now know? you're a businesswoman too, right? Yeah. So talk about your businesses. Um, I have the Realist Entertainment LLC. That's for my, you know, rapping for my company. I have the um Glass City Finance Transportation. You know, I just started up. Um, it's just you got to do stuff legit because you have to leave something for your children and their children. You mm. know, I'm trying to invest in the future. Everything I'm doing now is to pass the torch to my baby so they don't have to go hard. They don't have to grow up in the ghetto and worry about all the stuff I did. You know, seeing the stuff I just think. No. Mm -hmm. I was always an interesting topic for me when people say that they don't want their kids to live the life that they, you know, mm -hmm. have to go through. But then I always wonder, like, does that mean you're working your ass off so much that you don't have even time to pay attention to them? No. Because it all come together. Most of the time, they be with me doing stuff. Okay. Shooting the video, you know, going shopping, going to take pictures. We spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. I take a vacation, then I take them on vacation. I take a vacation, then I take them. So we spend a lot of time. It works out. So you're good at managing things at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's how you're so good at, you know, you're going to be able to do this movie, write this book, mm -hmm. and make this music, and everything's yes. just going to come and together. And they're going to be all a part of it. I got my daughter. She making my logos and mm -hmm. stuff. It's all coming together. My son, nine, he making beats for me on his cell phone. I'm like, it's just all going to come together. Who's your biggest inspiration? Um, Old or new? Anything. <laughs> hey, I love um, DMX. I've always loved DMX. Mm. You know, that's always my baby. And back in the day, Queen Latifah, that's my baby. But now I be rocking it. John Boy, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't talking about it, but we really do it. He got me ready to switch up and cut up. I want to get on that, too. So tell John Boy to hit me up. Because yeah. I want to get on that, really do it. And I be listening to Mark White. You know what really? I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Mark White, man. It's the first time I heard your name in this bitch. Yeah, this song called Cross Me and that shit called Car Door is lit. I've been banging it all in a, oh, everywhere I've been at. I got everybody listening to that. All that. I be showing love. I'm about to start my little own little podcast mm. while I'm doing a taxi called The Taxi Chronicles. Mm. So y'all can hear some of the shit that I be having to hear. Y'all can hear it yourself. The and Taxi Chronicles? Yes. And we're going to do music reviews, you know, letting people hear. Because you got other people that ain't never heard of these people from here. Like, they never heard of me. But mm. now they be like, what up? Is this Queen B? Yeah, I'm on the way. What's up? <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's what I've been listening to lately. Yeah. For real. Yeah, that's a Mark, man. You see, I told you, motherfucker. Yeah. I told you you could blow up if you really put your mind yeah, to this shit. Yeah, he can. He cold. I'm about to do some shit with him, Cole, mm. Dirk. You know what I'm saying? Hi, there. I'm about to do some shit with all of We about to cut the fuck up this summer. For sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like how you're getting involved in all aspects of media, similar mm. to like Snoop Dogg. Like, just literally just do everything. Like, yeah, not just focus everything. on one thing. And I'm about to do comedy. Mm. I love to laugh. I love to laugh. Make people crack up. Yeah. That's my specialty. How do you think uh, you built your fan base that you have right now? How What, what was, the, like, the... What, did you have a method for it, or did it just naturally happen? It just naturally happened. Just being me, being real. Mm. You know, people hear that music, and they listen to it. they like, damn, that's a real nigga. She real. She done been through that. She knew about that, and it just naturally grew. Mm. Yeah, it naturally grew. How'd you learn how to manage things all together, though? Where'd you get the skills to be able to manage so many things? Um, I've always been that person like i do multiple things at a time when i first left michigan i moved to canton ohio i worked three jobs i went to college you know what i'm saying for nursing i'm just used to it i already had three daughters a husband i'm used to doing the most that's basically now i'm just doing the most for myself instead of for others you know, I ain't about to work for no three businesses. I can open up my own three businesses. So Yeah, right on. That's just, I always been like that. Even before I was able, old enough to work, I used to go clean up apartment buildings, help the elderly people. I just always did something to get that money in. Yeah. You know, and then even after I stopped working and moved back to Michigan, I was scrapping. Copper and loomer, copper and loomer brass on the inside on the ass. I was on that, like selling dogs, selling mm. cars, breeding, selling houses, whatever. Yeah. Selling dinners, making that money. I'm just used to multitasking. I'm just rearranging it right now, making it make sense. No, that's awesome. Yeah. A lot of people could use that type of uh, ambitiousness and obviously organization mm -hmm. skills. I, I have a lot of faith in I you. I offer classes too. Yeah, you should. I'm for hire. My cash app is Queen B. The Realist. <laughs> I ghostwrite. All that I write movie scripts, books, whatever you want to bring to life. Mm -hmm. Hit me up. Cash at me right now. Don't waste my time. Exactly. Get up bars about, you know, we're going to set it up for you. 
And uh, let's get it. For sure. Features, talk, about, all that. talk about all future projects you have coming up for people to look forward to. Um, I'm about to do something with P-Dot. Me and her have been talking about doing something. Um, And then I'm going to shoot a movie, Ohio-based. Cool. I'm going to let the Detroit people see how they living in Ohio, you know? Because Ohio think that Detroit don't like them. Detroit, you know, it's back and forth, but... Shoot, it's cool with me. I'm about to put half and half of this movie. Half Ohio, half Detroit. That way we are networking I didn't know there together. was a problem between uh, Ohio and Detroit. I didn't know that either until I went down there and they started saying, like, Detroit don't like us. They only come down here and sell drugs and leave, you know, cause records. So we about to get all this together. And they little Detroit. Y'all call it little Detroit, you know? So I What don't is know. little Detroit? What are you talking about? Oh, Toledo, Ohio. They call themselves Little Detroit. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So Ohio doesn't think that Detroit likes them. Yeah. But what are they? What's the conversation like? Uh, you from Detroit? Don't tell nobody you from Detroit because they don't like Detroit niggas. You know what I'm really? saying? Just basically, I'm like, I'm cool. I'm good everywhere I go. Everywhere, Atlanta, North Carolina, Hawaii. I don't give a fuck where I'm at. I'm good everywhere. So I let everybody know I'm from Detroit. As soon as I say, "What up, though?" Yeah. They already know what time it is. Sure. What up, though? And when I pull up banging that music, you know what I'm saying? They know what time it is. <laughs> For sure. Like, Who is this? That's Big Homie Bars. That's his new shit. He about to drop. Mm. They know what time it is. For sure. Mm-hmm. Let everybody know how they can find you on social medias. Uh, Queen V, the letter V, as in victory, the realest mm. on all platforms. YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. For Queen sure. V, the realest. Everybody go check yep. out my uh, girl, Queen V, the realist. Appreciate you for being on here. I want to have Thank you back you on again. Um, did you want to shut yourself up? Yeah, go ahead, big homie. Bars of Battles Promotions. Y'all know what it is. So. And that's BMF Gangsta calling. Shout out to BMF. He's supposed to be in the building, but he just not pulling up. All right. Appreciate you guys. All right. Bro, peace. We out. <laughs>